Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by a substitution mutation. You should then be able to describe the potential effects of substitution mutations. OK, now we looked at DNA in a previous topic. Remember that DNA consists of a double-stranded polymer of molecules called nucleotides, and I'm showing you a DNA nucleotide here. Each DNA nucleotide consists of three parts. First, we have a 5-carbon sugar, deoxyribose. Attached to the sugar, we have a phosphate group. And on the other side of the sugar, we have a nitrogen-containing molecule called a base. Now, in the DNA molecule, the sugar and phosphate groups form the backbones of the two polymer strands, and the bases are found in the center between the backbones. In DNA, we find four different bases, and I'm showing you those here. We have adenine or A, thymine or T, guanine or G, and cytosine or C. Remember that the bases on one strand pair with the bases on the other strand. So A on one strand pairs with T on the other strand, and G on one strand pairs with C on the other strand. This is called complementary base pairing. These complementary bases form hydrogen bonds between each other. I'm showing you here the base sequences of two complementary strands of DNA. Although in practice, DNA strands are usually much longer than this. We can see the complementary base pairing between the two strands. So, for example, C on one strand is paired with G on the other strand, and A on one strand is paired with T on the other strand. Now, in practice, it's normal to write only one of the two DNA strands, so I'm showing you here only the top strand. Now, a key idea you need to remember is that DNA plays a key role in protein synthesis. The nucleotide sequence of a gene determines the amino acid sequence of a specific protein. Now, for this to happen, the nucleotide sequence is transcribed into messenger RNA. The messenger RNA is then translated by a ribosome into a polypeptide, and we've looked at transcription and translation in previous videos. Each triplet of DNA nucleotides in a gene encodes a specific amino acid, and these triplets are referred to as codons. Looking at the nucleotide sequence, we can see that we have five codons. I'm showing you here the amino acids coded for by these codons, and I should point out that you don't have to learn these. OK, now a change to DNA is called a mutation. Mutations can happen spontaneously, for example when DNA is replicated. However, mutations can also be caused by external factors, and these are called mutagens. I'm showing you some mutagens here. Mutagens include ionizing radiation, for example x-rays, chemicals such as those found in cigarette smoke, and certain viruses. OK, now a small scale change to the DNA in a gene is called a gene mutation. And if a gene mutation involves a single nucleotide, then that's called a point mutation. There are three types of point mutation. These are called substitution, deletion, and insertion. In this video, we're looking at substitution mutations, and in the next video, we look at deletion and insertion mutations. In a substitution mutation, one nucleotide is substituted by a different nucleotide. Now, substitution mutations can have three possible effects on the protein encoded by the gene. In this mutation, the T in codon 2 has changed to a C. Now, this mutation has no effect at all on the protein, and that's because the genetic code is degenerate. In other words, several different codons can code for the same amino acid. In this case, the amino acid glycine is encoded for by the codons GGT and GGC, as well as GGA and GGG. So changing the third nucleotide of this codon will still encode the amino acid glycine. So because of the degenerate nature of the genetic code, many substitution mutations have no effect on the protein or on the phenotype of the organism. Scientists call mutations like this a silent mutation. Here's another substitution mutation. However, this substitution could have a major effect on the protein produced. This mutation will change the amino acid alanine to glutamic acid. Now, changing an amino acid could affect the tertiary structure of the protein. For example, if this was an enzyme, then the shape of the active site could change, and this might prevent the substrate from binding to the active site. So, in this case, the mutation may prevent the enzyme from functioning. 
Now, a substitution mutation can have a positive effect, although I should point out that this is highly unlikely. For example, a substitution mutation might allow the active site to catalyze a reaction more effectively. So, substitution mutations can have a very large effect on a protein. A good example of this is in sickle cell anemia. This is caused by a substitution mutation in a gene for one of the polypeptides forming hemoglobin. In this case, the substitution mutation has a negative effect on the hemoglobin molecule. Under conditions of low oxygen concentration, the hemoglobin molecules form strands within the red blood cells, and this makes the red blood cells less effective at transporting oxygen around the body. Okay, now there is another way that a substitution mutation can have a dramatic effect on a protein. In this case, we have a substitution mutation in the third codon. However, this mutated codon does not code for an amino acid. Instead, we've created a stop codon. A stop codon triggers translation to stop, so we produce a shortened protein. And it's highly unlikely that this shortened protein could function correctly. In the next video, we look at deletion and insertion mutations.